A few weeks ago, I made this video where I went over a little bit of an intro to GraphQL. And in that video, I mentioned that I had recently started seeing more GraphQL in some of the apps that I was testing myself. And since then, I've come across GraphQL a few more times. And I personally just feel like I need to get some more experience in GraphQL and learn some more about how to properly test it. And since I was going to be spending some time solving some GraphQL labs anyway, I figured I might as well make a video about it and share it with you guys as well. Also, I know that a lot of people that watch my videos are specific specifically focused on mobile things. So things like forensic analysis and reverse engineering and all those things that are very specific to like mobile devices and mobile applications, those things you guys seem really interested in. But I wanted to make it clear that the API side of things is still a very big part of what goes into testing mobile applications. So when I do these labs that are more focused on web vulnerabilities, I want to make it clear that even though they're geared toward web applications, they're still very valid for mobile applications. And you can can still find a lot of these same types of vulnerabilities in the API of mobile applications as well. With that being said, let's get started. The lab that I'm going to be working on today is another one from the Portswigger Academy, and this lab is called Accidental Exposure of Private GraphQL Fields. The description says the user management functions for this lab are powered by a GraphQL endpoint. The lab contains an access control vulnerability whereby you can induce the API to reveal user credential fields. To solve the lab, sign in as the administrator and delete the username Carlos. Poor Carlos, we're always picking on him in these labs. But to get started, I'm going to access the lab in a new tab. I'm going to leave this open like I usually do, just in case I need to refer back to the description. And once the lab opens, I'm going to copy the link to that lab, and then I'm going to open Burp Suite. And then once Burp Suite opens, I'm going to open Browser. And I'm going to paste that URL from the lab into the browser inside Burp Suite. So now I'm able to capture that traffic in the Burp Suite proxy. And the instructions said that there was an access control vulnerability and we need to log in as the administrator. So we're going to click on my account so we can get to the login page. And now we're going to start playing with this page and see what we can find. I'm going to send one login request just with test test as the credentials just to see what that request looks like, even though I don't know what the actual credentials are. Obviously, it says invalid username or password, but we can go back and look in our proxy. And when we look at that request in our HTTP history, we see that there's an operation name login and it takes the input username and password and I want to play with this request some more so I'm going to send to repeater and then now that I have it in repeater I want to play with that GraphQL a little bit so I'm going to right click it and go up to GraphQL and set introspection query as I mentioned in that first GraphQL lab that I did a few weeks ago introspection is like the first thing that you should always look for whenever you start looking at GraphQL because if introspection is enabled for one that's immediately a security finding that's something you can report in a pen test report or a bug bounty or anything like that. But it also gives you a lot more information about like the back end of the GraphQL endpoint and it gives you a lot of information that you can use to structure other queries. And you might be able to use that to access private information or something else that could be an even larger vulnerability. But now that we have that introspection query populated in our request, I'm going to send the request and we get a response with all this information. So we know that introspection is enabled. Burp Suite actually has some built-in features. So you can right click that and go to GraphQL at the top and then save GraphQL queries to sitemap. And now if we go to this target tab, we see that we have all these queries saved for us in our sitemap. So if we just go through all the queries we have listed here, we can see that first we have login, which we already saw. We have a get blog post. We have one for change email. We have another one for login. We have one for get all blog post. We have another one for get blog post. And then the last one listed is get user. So if we select that one and take a look at the request, there's actually a get user request and it takes an ID value, which is an integer, and then it returns an ID, a username, and a password. So if we take this request and again, send to repeater, now we can take a look at repeater and I just want to send this request with ID set to zero and I'm gonna see what happens. It says get user null. So there is no user that has an ID equal to zero. But let's try changing that ID to one instead of zero and see if we find anything there. If we send that, we return an ID of one, username administrator, and here we have the password to that administrator. 
So we got a bit lucky there that we tried ID set to zero first and that gave us nothing. But then we tried ID set to one and that did give us the one that we we're looking for. But in general, administrator accounts are typically sort of smaller numbers, either zero, one, usually one of those numbers that are one of the first ones created. So that's actually pretty realistic. But even if that value hadn't been such a small number that was easy to find, like if that ID had been set to a hundred or something like that, we still could have found it pretty easily. We could have sent that request to the intruder and then add a marker on that ID value. We could just do a payload type of numbers going from zero to a thousand or however much we wanted to go. Assuming there was no rate limiting in place that would block us after a certain amount of time, which can sometimes happen if they have like a firewall or something that blocks IPs or something like that. But assuming there was no other protections in place, we could run that intruder over as many of those ID numbers numbers as we wanted and then eventually we could probably find an account that we wanted to get access to. But that's just a little tangent about what you could do in another scenario similar to this. But just to solve the lab here we have the administrator and we have the password. So I'm going to copy that password. I'm going to go back to the login page and I'm going to put in the administrator username and the password that we just got. I'm going to log in and I'm going to go to the admin panel and I'm going to delete Carlos. Poor Carlos. User deleted successfully, and congratulations, you solved the lab. So that was another pretty simple lab, but like I said at the beginning, I'm personally feeling like I've been seeing a lot more GraphQL lately, and I feel like I need to get some more practice and research and time spent working on GraphQL so I can feel more comfortable when I see it in my job. And I figured since I'm going to be spending some time working on it anyway, I might as well make a video about it. But let me know if you got any value out of this, and let me know if you want me to look at different kinds of vulnerabilities or different kinds of labs. But I am probably still going to be working on some GraphQL stuff in my free time over the next few weeks, so I might still end up making a couple more videos about GraphQL.